Welcome back to the Vexillology Volumes, where we put the ill in Vexillology. Quick, tell me, what's your favorite color? Alright, very cool, I don't care. Do you know who else has favorite colors? Flags. They like colors so much that often it's the only thing that's on the flag. Most of them don't need any symbols because the colors themselves are the symbolism. So let's talk about the history of flag colors and what they stand for. And for those who are colorblind, don't worry, you can be a test subject instead. Let's jump right into it. Flags haven't always been the thing that represents a nation. While many flag-like objects have been used since antiquity, the modern flag is a result of nationalism during the 19th century, and it was used to represent the nation and by extent its ethnicity and people. In the Middle Ages, however, coats of arms were much more popular. You know that stupid thing that's on the flag of a state you live in? The science of studying these coats of arms is known as heraldry, and they've got their own special rules to set themselves apart from vexillology. Colors are known as tinctures, and only seven of them are completely agreed upon to have that status. And they've all got special names based on the Norman French language. Argent, or, gules, azure, vert, sable, and pure pure. Many modern European flags take their colors from their coats of arms, so it's important to go over them. These seven are split up into two groups, the metals, argent and ore, and the other five are colors. This is because the first two came from silver and gold, while the latter five were made from dyes. The reason why this matters is the rule of tincture. You cannot make multiple metals touch each other, or make multiple colors touch each other. Why? Because coats of arms are used to recognize a knight under all of their armor, and if you're in an environment where it's difficult to see their shield, then the only way to recognize it is by the contrast of the tinctures. Argent and ore are too light, and the colors are too dark, so at a distance, they sort of blend together. Let's compare the flag of Denmark to the flag of Oldenburg. The former follows the rule of tincture, and the latter does not. Even from this, you can see that Oldenburg looks wrong, right? Now, see what happens if they're in grayscale, dark, and at a distance. I hope you noticed that Denmark was still recognizable, while Oldenburg was just one color. So states in the Middle Ages usually wanted to avoid this problem by following the rule of tincture. Here are a few examples. The Haptarchy is back, baby! Alright, now turn into coats of arms. Perfect. The only one you can kinda argue doesn't follow the rule is Essex, with their argent and ore touching. That's because argent is the natural color of the sword, and it's thus actually allowed, although rules like that are usually used for animals or vegetation. Ever wondered why so many tricolor flags have a white or yellow band in the middle? Well, this is why. A technique that some flags use to make sure that they follow the rule is known as fimbration. Norway would have their two colors touch, but in between are thin lines of argent, so it follows the rule. But my favorite one has to be South Africa, which, even though it has six whole colors on its flag, never breaks the rule of tincture because of its argent and ore fimbration. Well played. If you don't want to do either of those, then you can just settle. Germany and Russia, for example, have moved their medal from the fest to the base and chief respectively, and they still look pretty good. Albania does it right without even needing a tricolor format. Belize. And because I have no control over myself, here's a quick map chart.net map that I made to show you which national flags follow the rule of tincture. Also, I post this on my community tab and make people guess as to what it meant for a mention. You know, thinking that surely nobody's as huge of a nerd as me to actually get it right so that I can just use this as an advertisement for my community tab. Never mind. Alright, good job random mapper slash scratcher slash robloxian. And good job to these two as well, who pretty much got it right without actually saying the word tincture. But don't worry, welcome to the cult. Okay, so what was I doing? Alright, oh, colors. Let's talk about that. Argent is a name for white, coming from the metal silver. Tinctures didn't actually symbolize anything, and the tinctures of most coats were chosen arbitrarily, but humans really don't care and plaster symbolization on them anyways. Because of this, Argent often represented purity. Some colors have had the privilege to be the only one on a historical flag. 
White is one of these, with both the Umayyad Caliphate and a Bourbon Restoration being represented by mono-white banners. We should probably give them hats. That'll probably never happen today though, because the current meaning of a white flag is to surrender. Florida even changed their flag because of this reason. National flags that contain white either adopted the purity meaning it had in the Middle Ages, or it represents peace. If it's combined with blue, it probably means the sky, since blue would represent the sea. The national flags with the most white on them are Cyprus, Japan, and South Korea. If we were to combine all national flags into one super flag, white would cover about 18% of it, which is the second most. Or is named for yellow, coming from the metal gold. It usually meant wealth or obedience to the faith. And by faith, I mean Christianity. The Sultanate of Brunei had a purely yellow flag for quite a while. Otherwise, mono yellows are often used at sea to communicate sickness. Naval signal flags are pretty interesting, and you bet that there will be a volume for that as well. Currently, flags with yellow on them either still mean material wealth or faith, but they get a lot of different meanings as well. One notable meaning is the sun, either implied or literal. The national flags with the most yellow on them are Brunei, Spain, and the Vatican. The super flag would have a yellow cover about 9% of it. Respectable, but not much. Gules is the name for red, and it's one of the five colors. Let's not beat around the bush here. There's only one thing that red has always stood for, and it's BLOOD! Has your country battled a lot of blood in its struggles? Then it probably has red on its flag. Ah, oh, so that's why Poland has so many of those. A mono-red flag in politics often represents revolution, which is also why communism adopted it. An example of a purely red flag in history was that of Musket and Oman. Current national flags with red on them keep the symbolization of the bloodshed, unless you're Canada, in which case it stands for England. The national flags with the most red are China, Morocco, and Turkey. Red covers about 30.3% of the super flag, the most, and it's not even close. Asia is named for blue, and it's one of the five colors. It usually meant truth and loyalty. On our modern national flags, blue usually stands for the sea, the sky, or both at the same time. The national flags with the most blue are Micronesia, Somalia, and the DRC. The super flag has about 21.1% of it covered in blue, which is mostly carried by tiny island nations. So blue wasn't that interesting, but trust me, green is gonna rock your socks off. Vert is named for green, and it's one of the five colors. It usually meant hope, but most coats with green on them use them because of the natural color of vegetation. So green as a thing was pretty unpopular, but currently it's a lot more common thanks to it being a prominent color in Islam, as well as a part of the Pan-African flag. It's a pretty well-known fun fact that Libya had a purely green flag until 2011, while Saudi Arabia and the Arab League have a mono-green background. Outside of Africa and the Islamic world, it's a lot less common, with some keeping the symbol of hope and some keeping the symbol of vegetation. The most green national flags are Saudi Arabia, Bangladesh, and Turkmenistan. Green covers 14.9% of the super flag. Sable is a name for black, and it's one of the five colors. It was usually put on coats as a symbol of strength, but black flags have always meant death and mourning over death as well. Pirates like death so they adopted the color and made the Jolly Roger. Anarchists like pirates, so they adopted the black flag as well, often covering half of it with another color to show off their fungi ideologies. The Abbasid Caliphate is an example of an empire using a mono-black flag. Just like green, it's most common around Africa and Arabia, because it either stood for the people of Africa, because they're black, oh, Twitter isn't gonna like that one, or it could also mean the dark path of colonialism. This is why it's very often coupled with white for peace and red for bloodshed. There are a lot of those. The most black flags are Papua New Guinea, Angola, and Libya. It covers 4.9% of the super flag, the least so far, but it's gonna get a lot worse from here. Pure Pure is a name for purple, and it's the last of the five colors, but that status is often put into question because purple dye was incredibly difficult to get your hands on. Again, it's a pretty well-known fact that purple was reserved for royalty, because they're the only ones with stacks fat enough to afford it. This makes it hard to talk about because barely any notable coats or flags use it. The most notable one was the Kingdom of Leon, which is actually on the Spanish flag, but they changed it to pink, even though it says Pure Pure. So the only flags that use it are Dominica, Nicaragua, and El Salvador, and you really have to squint if you want to find it on the latter two. It covers 0% of the super flag. It's completely negligible. The colors that I haven't mentioned are not recognized by heraldry and are thus pretty uncommon in modern flags. There is another category besides metals and colors called stains, but those are usually put on coats as an embarrassment. 
Orange is by far the most common here, and I agree, but every country that uses it slaps their own meaning on it. The only consistency here is representation of Hinduism or Buddhism, such as in Bhutan's flag and maybe India's flag. The other ones are gonna have to settle a lot more. If you like grey, then Malta and Equatorial Guinea have some. If you like brown, then Mexico's eagle is all you've got. And if you like pink, then you're just out of luck. Besides the aforementioned Spain, pride flags are your best bet. These colors take up the remaining 1.8% of the super flag, but it's pretty much just orange. Oh darn, I haven't done the joke yet. Um, if you live in a country with orange on the flag, then subscribe. <laughs> Got him. Hey hey, welcome back to the Endless Void where I once again ask you to subscribe because who cares about dignity anyways. Next video is gonna be a big one. We're wrapping up the space arc set up in the previous two videos and it's gonna be about the origin of every national flag. Yes, all of them. Will it be out in two weeks? Hmm, I don't know. Maybe you should keep in touch with my community tab if you like no, because big things and big announcements are gonna be over there. Alright. 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 Alright, anyway, see ya.